We're back at Walt Disney World! It's good to be back in Florida. It's good to be back in the Magic Kingdom. And tonight we're gonna see something amazing. But first, take a look at this. Do you know what this is? This is the former shell of Splash Mountain. Of course, it's been closed now for quite a while, but look at this. Today is one of the first days they've been testing the flume. The water is flowing once again through the old Splash Mountain soon to become Tiana's Bayou Adventure. Of course, a lot of people are looking forward to the new ride, but I still can't help but feel a little bit sad that old Splash Mountain has been reduced to this sad, sort of forgotten, left behind thing. Because after all, back in August of 1993, for three days, this was a ride fit for royalty, literally. Because back in 1993, none other than Princess Diana, yes, THE Princess Diana, and her two sons came here to Walt Disney World and rode Splash Mountain not once, but several times. And this wasn't the only ride that was a real splash with royalty. Little Prince William, the future King of England, loved Space Mountain so much, he rode it at least 13 times in a row. So many times that one of the security guards actually had to get off and take a little break to throw up. So you see, Walt Disney World is a place where even if you're already real life royalty, your dreams can come true. Prince William, Prince Harry, and their mother, Princess Diana, all all loved their three days at Walt Disney World. And now I'm gonna show you the rooms they stayed in. Back in 1993 at Disney World, the newest, best, most bougie, fancy hotel in the entire resort. By far, not to mention the closest to Magic Kingdom itself, is the one right across the Seven Seas Lagoon from the Magic Kingdom's entrance. The beautiful, the luxurious, and at the time, the newest hotel at Disney World, the Grand Floridian Resort and Hotel. You see, the Grand Floridian was built in 1988, which means in 1993, it was only five, maybe six years old. It was the newest, brightest jewel in the crown, pun very much intended. And so, of course, there was no better place for Princess Diana or her sons, one of which would become the future King of England. In fact, even today, the Grand Floridian is one of the nicest, the most clean and wonderful resorts anywhere near Magic Kingdom on the monorail loop. I mean, just look at this. Look at the size of that lobby. There's a reason this is a deluxe resort. It's fancy, it's beautiful, it's located right on the loop with the monorail from Magic Kingdom. I mean, I actually just got to walk over here from the park. Even today, it's a thing of wonder and a thing of beauty. And even today, you can see why if you're rich or world famous, this would be a great place to stay. Keep in mind, back in 1993, they hadn't built the Waldorf Astoria nearby or the Four Seasons yet. This was it. And up here on the fifth floor, where you cannot get, by the way, without a room key, Princess Diana and her royal compadres and family members had the entire fifth floor to themselves, specifically the entire wing down this hallway where the presidential suite is. Or as it's much better known to Disney World fans in the know, the Princess Diana Suite. Dude, this is awesome. You get to the end of this hallway and we gotta be quiet because there's other guests here. Now, unlike when Diana was here, we don't have the whole floor to ourselves. You get to the end of the hall and then look at this. There's a whole sort of lobby unto itself, including an elevator that goes all the way down to the ground floor and to the restaurants. Look at this table. Look at this golden sculpture. You're gonna exit to the stairway right here. There are two chairs if you have servants, I guess, or security. And then here, just outside the elevator that you do need a key to get up, is the Princess Diana suite itself. Good old room 4001. Now, if you've been watching Random Land for a long time, you'll know that five years ago, I had the very good luck to get inside the suite and film a whole tour at night, just like this. Well, the same group came back again, and so this is actually our second visit into this suite together. But the thing is, since the last time we were here, this suite has been completely remodeled. Prepare to have your mind blown. Because, gang, we're going in. Oh. My. Gosh. Look at this place. It is absolutely enormous. Look at this. We're not even out of the hallway yet. This is completely different looking and much nicer looking 
than it used to be five years ago. As you can see, coming in from the main doorway, there are so, so many doors in this hallway, and we're gonna explore each and every one of them in just a minute. But first, the money shot. Behold, the glory, the wonder, the royal splendor of the Princess Diana suite. Look at the size of this room. Not only is it absolutely enormous, look at the size of this place, but thanks to the recent remodel over here, it is more beautiful, more stunning than ever. I'm using a pretty darn wide lens and you still can't take it all in. Just look at the chandelier there. So royal, so beauty and the beast. It is breathtakingly large. Now this room was actually remodeled between when Princess Diana stayed here and when I got the chance to film it last time. There's really only a few images online of what the interiors of the rooms and the lobby looked like back in the 90s and even back in the 80s when it first opened in 1988. And as you can see even from the few that I found, it was a far cry from the kind of class and quality that it is today or has been in recent decades. Those of you like me who are alive in the 90s will remember that sort of faux Victorian style, the ugly carpets, the ugly patterns, the ugly wood furniture. Well, that is all a thing of the past now. The last time I was here, it was nice, but it really didn't seem like fitting for a princess. Ironically, now that Princess Diana has sadly been gone for a long time, 31 years after her visit, it is truly fit for royalty. Now, the last time I was here, the one thing that hadn't changed was the bar at this end of the room. That's even now been adjusted, been altered, but it's still roughly in the same spot. So this still gives you a rough idea of what Princess Diana's lodgings were like. This is the room she stayed in, and I figured it's best to start with the living room before we start exploring all the different doors and stuff like that, because there is more square footage in this hotel suite than there is in my entire house. And by the way, to get this suite just for one night, cost twice my monthly rent back in California, which is not cheap. Before we get to all the features and before we get into what they've changed and how the room used to look, the main feature of this beautiful living room has got to be the fact that it has not one, not two, but three balconies, each one looking out on a different feature of the Seven Seas Lagoon. The main balcony straight ahead looks out, of course, most over the Grand Floridian Resort itself. You can see a little bit of Magic Kingdom back there, but look at that. You see the main pool, you see a beautiful fountain downstairs. Gorgeous, absolutely gorgeous view. It's small, look at, you can see a normal sized chair there. Not very deep uh, as far as balconies go, but what a great view. And of course, going to the other balcony, you got my favorite view, a look straight out at the castle from Magic Kingdom, look at it out there. You can see the marina of the Grand Floridian. Ooh, it must be Wednesday, look at all that. I mean, there is nothing to hate about that. And clearly, Princess Diana didn't hate it either. Because as was usual with Diana, there were actually paparazzi down there shooting photos of her on the balcony having her morning tea. And although the view was uh, clearly lovely, she didn't look too pleased in those photos. <laughs> all right, last but not least, we have a third royal balcony over here. Looking out towards the Seven Seas Lagoon, the TTC and the Magic Kingdom parking lot back there, the Polynesian, what a glorious view that is. But as nice as it all is, and as fantastic as it is, having three amazing balconies looking out over these prime locations at Disney World, I think the view inside is even sweeter. Just quickly look at this, in this first corner here, you have a new bar, they've replaced the old bar, which was actually the only thing left from Princess Diana's time when I visited last time. And instead of a television on this wall over here, they've now added this huge dining room table. I mean, much bigger than anything I've got in my house. The nice painting behind it. Look at this, some beautiful sconces on the walls. And they've added this huge, giant uh, structure here. What do you call that? It's not really an armoire. Well, whatever it is to hold a big television. There's a couple of these nice high-backed chairs over here and a beautiful table so that you can get ridiculously close to your to your Disney Plus or whatever you want to watch. And in the far corner, past the TV, you've got this beautiful sort of, what do you call that? Is this uh, piece of furniture a chaise lounge, a chaise lounge, a chase lounge? You know what I'm talking about? I don't even know. A fainting couch? What do you call this? Either way, clearly furniture fit for royalty, huh? How about that? Paint me like one of your French girls, 
Jack. And if you happen to look up from your fainting couch, you'll see some beautiful glass butterflies there, very fancy. And look at that lovely painting of Belle out there in the garden. There's this cabinet thing. Some weird jars. And then, of course, the main feature, these double couches in semicircles, kind of looking at each other, this nice lounge area right in front of the main balcony, right in front of the windows. You can get a breeze blowing in here if it's not too hot. I mean, I'm not the kind of guy that's very comfortable relaxing anywhere, even in my own house, but I have to say, this is pretty nice. Ugh. I feel nervous even sitting down on the furniture. I mean, everything in here from the lamps, the decor, the patterns, the furniture, the tables, everything feels like there's so much more quality to it. Last time the room was impressive because of the sheer size of it. I mean, this living room is much bigger than my whole apartment that I used to live in. And even though I didn't know the exact dollar figure of what the room cost, since obviously it wasn't my room, I was still very much impressed in terms of like, I could never afford this. I don't belong in here. And I still kind of have that feeling like, oh, this is like a museum. I don't touch anything. But now, I mean, even just the paint colors, the tones, look at the crazy marble flooring and all that. All of this feels so much more lush, so much more fancy. There are some parts of this that look fancier than any building I've been in in France or anywhere else. This is really nice. Anyway, now that you've seen what the main living room looks like today, I'll give you a little peek at what it looked like back five years ago and, of course, what this bar area looked like. Wow! Wow! You look at the size of this room. It's gargantuan. This is amazing. This is so nice. I definitely do not belong in here. Ugh. Wow, it is so nice in here. Look at this nice furniture. And most of all, there's so much space in here. I've been in hotel lobbies that are smaller than this room. I mean, I know this stuff is always hard to relate on camera, but you could probably comfortably see at least 11, maybe 12 people just in this living room seating area. Then, of course, behind the couch, there's a whole dining room table where you could put four more people. Or have your tea and crumpets. And then, look, there's a little desk over here. When I can work on my typography, old man. This is epic. And look back over on the other side of the room. For their more thirsty guests, a private bar. Oh, yeah. That's nice. I have got the feeling that Don Draper would approve. Give me a whiskey sour, Mac. Right away, sir. <laughs> Let me stir that for you. <laughs> oh, oh, oh. Oh. How long have you been working here? Well, I've been tending bar here since, um, since Princess Diana. Really, okay. Yes, of course, before that I was at the Say Royal it. College of Mixing Drinks by Finger. As you can see, a lot has changed in here. Ah, yes, my good man, but some things have never changed. <laughs> Is that a point? <laughs> Mm. Ooh, they got some beautiful books in here. And here's something they definitely didn't have in 1993, much less five years ago, the last time I was here. They have their own Disney version of Siri. Now, I tried talking to it. Hey, Disney, turn off the lights. Sorry, that's not something I can do. But look at that. I feel like Princess Diana had better servants than that thing. Well, at least supposedly it can play Disney music. All right, we could make this video very, very long, showing all the details, but we should probably start back at the beginning, and I should probably get to showing you the rooms. After all, you guys were already here with me five or six years ago. We looked into every nook and cranny the way that it used to be, and now it's mostly about what does it look like remodeled. Okay, when you first walk in the front door, the very first thing you're gonna see in the foyer, ooh, fancy French word for entrance, are two doors. One of them leads to a closet, which is awfully similar to most hotel rooms that I could usually stay in and afford. No, 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 very nice room. Oh, actually, look at this one. Ooh. Just like my home. And then across the way, the other door is a nice guest bathroom. This way, as I said last time I was here, you don't have to share a throne with the peasants. And on a serious note, if you're Harrison Ford or Martha Stewart or Princess Diana, if you have security with you or kids or relatives or whoever, you don't have to share a bathroom with them. They can just come in here, your guests or people if they're staying in other rooms, because obviously if you have the money for this place, you probably have several other rooms on this floor. It's, it's a nice bathroom, but it's sort of your bog standard bog, uh, to use a, a British term, and you continue down this hallway. And by the way, this little area, this little entryway proper, this vestibule or whatever you want to call it, this feels very Jane Austen or very Parisian or something like that. You sit down here, you take off your shoes or change your shoes. You've got a lovely umbrella stand over here, a lovely urn and a 
telephone. And actually, they got a lot of urns in this place, but we'll get to that. Here's some pamphlets and information. Ooh, the Royal Palm Club team. Weird. Even the brochures on the table are fancy. Anyway, look at this. I almost feel like I need to take off my shoes to be respectful. If I walked into somebody's house, and it looked as nice as this in the entryway, I would be nervous. So believe you me, even the last time I was here, I was feeling really uncomfortable and overawed by the presence of whoever could afford this place and check this place out on the regular. That really has not changed. All right, now we're getting to it. Now we're getting to the bedrooms and we might as well start with the biggest and the best. And holy England's rose, Batman. Look at this. They have changed this quite a bit. This looks a lot more like a princess's bed, I'll tell you what. This hotel bedroom is probably as big, if not bigger, than my living room. Look at the new bed, this like four post princess style bed with a little Michael Scott bed there at the foot. So many luxurious pillows. This is a king size bed, by the way. Of course it would be a king size bed in a royal suite, but look how small it looks compared to the room. And then look at the little hidden Mickey made from towels here, sitting on the edge. There's a beautiful, oh so American ideas of what a British room would look like. Little chair with a footstool, nice little lamp and some old-timey Victorian-looking drawings on the wall. This was Princess Diana's room where she slept. Now, last time I was here, the bed was in a completely different spot. It was all completely different. But look at this. This was obviously here back in 93. This is yet another balcony. Our Princess Diana could sneak out at night. Maybe she could crawl over here into one of the adjoining bedrooms because, of course, she had this whole wing here. So I'm assuming William and Harry actually had their own rooms in one of these guys over here, maybe some security next door. If you know anything about Diana, you'll know how much she loved her security. I know one of her sons is a big fan of security and privacy. I mean, I just, I'm having a hard time giving you a sense of just how big and just how royal feeling this room is, especially now that it's all remodeled. Here's what it looked like before, back in the day. And then, I mean, just look at the transformation that's happened here. Again, a nice weird little dresser thing with a TV. Apparently Princess Diana's cigar humidors are here. Any British royal secrets? Nothing. Of course, the candle in the wind today would have her own thermostat temperature control, a nice little pedestal with a weird, you know, fake flower made of stone or whatever. And then just look at this. Now this is a closet fit for a princess, lovely full length mirror, nice painting at the end, and some robes or dressing gowns or whatever you call them if you're fancy. Look at this, you got a steamer. That's pretty cool, a handheld steamer so you don't have any wrinkled clothes. What's this, another humidor? Ooh, that's the fancy, that's the fanciest box for a hair dryer I've ever seen. Beautiful chest of drawers next door. Beyond that, another closet space with your luggage rack, a safe, an extra pillow and blanket. I mean, dude, look at the length of this. I mean, look at this. You can catch some air in here. Whoa! Oh, oh that was close. Oh my gosh. Anyway, at the end of the hallway, there's a painting. I think that's supposed to be England's Rose right there. And then, of course, what bedroom would be complete? What master bedroom? Without a master bathroom. And this has all changed as well. Okay, this is very hard to explain, but back in the day, the last time I came here, this whole room here had a big giant double sink and it had a bunch of closets, but they had those weird like slat, like almost blinds looking doors and covers. This is much more open concept. And so is this bathroom because when you entered this bathroom back in the day, there was like a series of chambers. There was one chamber for your toilet. There was one chamber for a bidet, which looked like this. The toilet itself is just your bog standard sort of ordinary toilet. Although it does have a nice fancy leather backup teepee roll case here, which I like. These rich people are smart. They're prepared for an emergency. Even my bathroom has a throne like this, but what we don't have at home is one of these things. Ooh, check this out. Now you might be tempted to think that this is a fancy face washing station right here, but trust me, <laughs> it's not. I've made that mistake before. And then finally, there was one further chamber with a big sort of round like jacuzzi tub that almost looked like, I don't know, something you'd see like in an old hotel, like jacuzzi tub. But like here you've got the shower, you've got a nice sized bathtub and a more regular bathtub and a nice little sitting area. You can take off your shoes or your slippers 
and then the sinks are here, the toilets here, it's much more modern feeling, much more open feeling. I mean, it feels a little open if you're used to, like me, a small bathroom space where everything's together in a much more confined area. But last time it was almost like a labyrinth. Well, I might as well show you the clip from last time so you can see the difference. You guys, you can fit several princesses in here. You can probably bathe all seven dwarves in here, as a matter of fact. I mean, that's no bathtub right there. That's an indoor swimming pool. Shamu can take a bath in that thing. Free Willy! Other large references. That is sick. My new life goal is to somehow come back here and be allowed to take a bath in there. Because I've got permission to be in here and permission to bring you guys in here and film. But unfortunately, nobody said anything about bathing. Which is a shame because I'm in Florida, so of course I'm feeling kind of sweaty. Just being honest. See, you can see why it almost looks like I'm in a whole different hotel. A much nicer hotel, honestly. This remodel, chef's kiss. Perfection. Now, a little privacy, please. Hey, privacy in here, too. Hey, what do you think is different here? You guys just can't control yourself. No privacy in this place at all. All right, so that was the master bath and the master bedroom. This is where Princess Diana slept. Of course, the bed used to be over here, so she slept roughly around that area. If her ghost is here, <laughs> hello, ma'am. Now we're going to close the door on that chapter and see the final room, which is for some reason my favorite room. Probably because even though I know they probably didn't, I imagine this is where William and Harry would have slept. This is what I like to call in Disney suites, the kids' room. Because usually what you'll have in various Disney suites, and I've been in several of them, both in California and in Florida, actually even in Paris, you'll have sort of a master bedroom like what we saw there, and then you'll have a room with two twin beds uh, like this, where you can kind of imagine kids being, or sometimes a twin bed and maybe some bunk beds. This suite didn't have a couch that looked like it could pull out to a bed, but most of the Disney suites do, usually because I mean, they're expensive, so you'll have most suites where a large group will maybe split it or something like that. Actually, a large group was in this suite before we got here using it in the daytime, which is why we're allowed to be in here at nighttime filming it. They're not actually sleeping here, but if you see some like clutter and stuff like that, it's because other people were in here. But this kind of suite, a presidential suite like this, if somebody's staying in here, they've got the money for separate rooms, usually for the kids. So I like to think of this as the kids' room. And look at that, you got different Disney princesses on the wallpaper back there. There's Tiana, I see Cinderella, I saw Mulan. So you can imagine like a, a well-to-do family saying, maybe mom and dad are staying over there, maybe a CEO, a business tycoon, Bob Chapek, who knows? A master bedroom and then maybe a couple of grandkids or some kids in here with the fun princess wallpaper and all that kind of stuff. But of course, like I said, I like to imagine that this is where William and Harry sleep even though I know they probably, even in 1993, had their own separate bedrooms, probably had their own separate servants and stuff like that. I like to think of them in here, sleeping together, having a little chit-chat at night. And last time I let my imagination get a little carried away with me. The beds, by the way, were over against that wall. And here's what that looked like. My brother and I, we shared a room. And after the lights went out, we'd always kind of have little conversations all night, you know? I mean, I know it probably didn't happen. But it's easy to picture. Hello, I'm Prince William. And I'm Prince Harry. And we're the princes. And we've been having a lovely time with Ma riding on Splash oh, Mountain. fantasy land. Oh, oh yes, it's a pie. I love the Peter country Pan bear, Jan Marie. Oh, oh yes. I do enjoy country oh, bears too. Big Al is a good one. Oh, oh, I love the country oh, bear, Jan Marie. Now you boys sit down, man. Oh, man. It's a good one. Don't you come in there. I'll lock you in the tower of London, I will. You better go and sleep. Go and sleep now. I'm too excited to sleep. How about you, Harry? Right, 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 right. Oh, little William and Harry. They're all grown up now. One is now, what, the Prince of Wales? One is living in Santa Barbara doing Netflix stuff. Look at this. It's a coincidence that there's England's rose is back in here. One red rose. Well, I guess the two brothers probably don't share a bedroom anymore. But I'd like to think that maybe one day oh, William and Harry could get together, maybe bring their own kids and have a family trip to Disney World, and maybe, just for old time's sake, share a bedroom again. Oh, Harry! Hello, William! Isn't it great to be back together again? Oh, yes, we all are. Disney World and everything. Oh, we're not here with my wife. What? What? Yes, we're going to have the greatest time. We're going to do all the rides. It's nice to be out of that bloody stiff palace and have the servants and the children here, and both the wives. Oh, oh, oh. Your wife and my wife. What? Hi, Jim, today. Get up too, eh? Oh, it's nice, right, it's nice right. to be back. 
brother. Oh, you saucy boy! I should lock you in a tower in London, eh? Oh, 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 oh. I remember that. Peter Pan, I was thinking. Peter Pan's British. You know what? Teacups are British. We might Did have you see Lady Catherine? We might have some tea. We're in town, eh? Oh, 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 oh. What's that? What's that noise? What's that noise? Oh! Oh! Is that your wife or mine? Oh. Scamps. Now, I'm honestly not sure if I showed this last time because I don't think I knew, but this back here is not a window. This is yet another balcony. I mean, I felt like I explored the whole place last time, but honestly, I do not remember seeing this. Now look at this. William and Harry are a year older and a year younger than me. And so I remember what it was like in 1993, at least going to Disneyland. Now my parents never had the scratch to take us on a trip out to Disney World, and my mom doesn't fly, so that would have been impossible anyways. But I can just imagine being that age, the impression that Walt Disney World would have given me, that having this room would have given me. And of course for them, living in stuffy palaces with governesses and going to boarding school and whatever that world is like, it must have been a lot of fun to come here for three days with your mom, your parents just split up, you're having a wild time with the security guards, you're riding Space Mountain 13 times. I've only been to London once, but I have to imagine this view is a lot different seeing the castle back there than the one they would have seen at home. Now, they would have been familiar with castles, obviously. And of course, palaces, but even real royalty loves a Disney castle. So that would have been pretty awesome peeking out there. All right, well, as for the room itself, you see you got your two beds here, you got your little nightstand between, you got your little Michael Scott beds again, your little footstools. Kind of an awkward shaped room, all these rooms are, but you got this nice area over here where the beds used to be that you got this big entertainment center now. Sort of a built-in dresser, a nice handy urn, some birds made of gold. And then check this out in here. You got a single sink, so again, the kids have to share. Some really fancy sconces, and then surprisingly for what I would think of as a kid's bathroom, pardon the mess, if there is any mess in here, was well, not mine. You got your, uh, your royal throne back here, your fancy sconces, and you have a shower. I would have expected maybe a shower tub combination, but I'm thinking if any kids are gonna stay in here, they're probably fancy kids and probably safer not to have them unobserved at a bathtub. Maybe rich kids don't take baths, maybe they only take showers. How the heck would I know, you know? I've never been rich. If you'd like to keep me out of the poorhouse, though, you can always support my video adventures by checking out Patreon or our online store or the PayPal link, hey, hey! Then maybe one day I can afford to stay in here all night and not just for a few hours. <laughs> anyway, look at how weird of an angle. You see what I'm saying? Like all these walls have strange angles. If you're gonna sit on this toilet, it almost feels like time out, like you're facing this weird corner over here. You can't look around at the shower. You can't look around at the bedroom. No, no, no. That's a time out potty. Anyway, you got your little stone trash can down there. Looks like you got plenty of towels. You got a nice golden sink, a golden mirror. Ooh, a little makeup mirror if your kids are into makeup. Look at this, I didn't notice. You got a little closet right there with an extra pillow and blanket, and then an even closet next door. With, what do we have here? We got some more robes. Oh, lights on in the closet. See, I need some lights like that at home in my closet. Well, I don't own the house, so I'm not going to remodel it. But anyway, got a little chest of drawers, another humidor thingy, fancy Con Air. Thing. Isn't Con Air an airline? Hmm. Anyway, we got another steamer here. You don't want your kids looking all wrinkled. What is up with these fancy kids? They're too good for wrinkles. That's how you know I'm not a fancy kid. Everything I own is wrinkled. And thanks to Allie's cat Frankenstein, covered with cat hair. Whew. Kind of creepy in here, actually. Got the uh, little drapes blowing in the wind over there. Then you got just enough mirrors. And I keep thinking that I see somebody out of the corner of my eye. And even though this place is completely changed, even from the last time I was here, structurally speaking, it's a very odd shape, all these rooms. And at least these window pieces, they're exactly the same as when Princess Diana was here in 19... 93, one of the happiest memories probably of her life at that time anyways, with her boys. They still had press and paparazzi following them around and stuff like that, but it was, for them, it was a getaway. And even in recent interviews, William and Harry both have like really fond memories of being here. It was clearly a very special time with their mom and it, it touches the heart, but it also makes it kind of creepy. 
Just a little bit, just a little bit. I doubt her ghost would be here. There are probably a lot of nicer places her ghost could be if ghosts exist, and I don't know much about the afterlife because I've never been there, so maybe they don't. Although I've seen a ghost or two in my time, but at least for uh, places I've been and seen and been allowed to spend a few hours in, this isn't a bad place to be a ghost. <laughs> Which makes me just a little bit nervous. Well, there you have it. The complete tour of the completely remodeled Princess Diana Suite in the Grand Floridian. I'm never gonna feel quite comfortable here. This is not, this is not my kind of lodging uh, personally, but if you're a millionaire or a multi-thousandaire, or hey, maybe you have a rich, generous uncle, I highly recommend this as a place to stay. You got a couple of kids, they got the Prince William and Prince Harry room, you got a nice bathroom for the servants, so knock yourselves out. As for me, I'm gonna take my Costco socks and stick them back in my shoes, and go back to my peasant lodgings where I'm staying with my friend here, in Florida, a much more normal room with a uh, much less grand chandelier, I'll tell you that much. But we are going to see some other very fancy rooms at Disney World that are equally difficult to get into. We're going to have some adventures in the parks, I'm sure. If you like this video, there's plenty more where that came from. We've been doing this for 11 years now, so make sure you're subscribed or still subscribed. Ring that bell for notifications. It's getting harder and harder to get people to see this kind of stuff. We want the adventures to continue, so again, check out the links down below if you'd be so kind. Especially, we'd love to connect with you in the Facebook group. We'd love for you not to miss out on the road trips that are coming later this year, the theme park adventures, the historical spots, and so, so much more. But for now, I think we've all done our duty, which means we can go home and sleep well. <laughs>
Disney armadillo, Disney armadillo on the path from Magic Kingdom. Look at that thing, it's weird and armored. It's running away from me. I heard they have leprosy. That is pretty sweet.